Well, it's been a while since I last did a video, and uh, just the other day, one of the uh, receivers I have here, uh, the Watkins Johnson 8718, developed a fault. So I had it on a uh, on the desk here and uh, went through it to uh, identify uh, tantalum capacitor had gone short. Um, it's fairly common on a lot of this age of gear. Uh, in fact, I would say probably uh, half the time it'll all boil down to a, a tantalum bead capacitor going going short circuit. Anyway, um, this is the uh, Watkins Johnson 8718A MFP. That's a microprocessor front panel version of the 8718. It's um, a, 19, a late 1970s, early 80s receiver. This particular receiver, to be honest, came from China. Um, it was sold as uh, one of the very first trade agreements with China back in the 80s. Uh, Bill Clinton signed off on it. And um, I picked this up um, probably about two or three years ago and uh, went through it all, added in the, um, uh, the input um, pre-selector system that you, you can have with these. The, the, ironically, all the control systems are all still there, but the main building block, which is here, was missing, so it's now fitted. Um, it's all buttoned up at the moment, so there's no... Um, <clears throat> I can't show the internal uh, arrangement of the receivers. Um, I have to say, it's probably the... Uh, Probably the best performing traditional synthesized receiver that um, that I've had the chance to uh, to operate. Um, as you know, my favourites have been the Rakels, and uh, in the past the the valve equipment, which have uh, you know very very low noise, but uh, you know obviously drift issues predominantly with those sort of receivers is is an issue. Um, but this particular set solves almost all three boxes. It's excellent dynamic range, very low noise, um, filter skirts incredibly good um, and of course frequency stability through synthesis. Um, added to that this, this punch front panel which um, actually again I've used a lot of um, buttoned you know, microprocessor front panels like the uh, Raykel 6790 and this one I actually uh, quite like. It's um, It's got a nice delicate feel. <laughs> that's, that's all I can describe about it. It's uh, you, know, you just lightly touch the buttons and, and the, it, it immediately goes to that mode and, and, and everything's great. Um, Build quality, I will say, is impressive in some areas, but let down in others. You know, there's a lot of leads uh, and wires within the receiver which are just plug-on plastic um, blocks onto pins on boards, which, um, you know, surprises me for something which was uh, supposedly to meet more standard um, shape, rattle and roll, um, would actually comply with that. Uh, with that level of vibration, maybe it was a low level spec vibration on this particular receiver. But um, boards are moderately well supported, but again, you see a lot of these boards warped actually in the receivers. They Over time, they've developed a warp in the board, um, and uh, that it, does, it doesn't look as tidy as it could perhaps inside. Um, but so there's no denying the performance is phenomenal. It is a great, great receiver. Um, as I think you may look at uh, things like the R390, and uh, 390A as being the pinnacle of the valve era, um, you're probably looking at this particular receiver as being the pinnacle of probably the super heterodyne solid state synth um, before we got into DSP. So this was about as far as it got um, before we got into DSP and it was uh, it, it's quite something to behold. Um, I'll, I'll switch the receiver on now and just turn a few things down. It's, uh, it's in the evening here, early evening, it's 7 o'clock and uh, we're based in Brisbane, in, in Australia, so we, we don't get a, a tr tremendous amount of traffic down here anyway on HF, and a lot of it's fairly spartan. But, um, yeah, I'll just have a bit of a tune around. So the, the, the set itself, um, just even through the front panel, uh, all the mode selection is done in this area here. Um, it has AM, even an FM, uh, USB upper sideband, an independent sideband, um, and CW, uh, which is uh, variable and, and fixed here, yeah, which uh, is just quite neat. Um, obviously the usual sort of uh, AGC, fast, slow or manual. Um, you can manually select various filters. In this particular receiver there's five fitted. Um, and you can go for frequency entry by direct mechanical switch entry um, or by going through the fast, medium, slow on the uh, main VFO knob. Which, uh, which is quite great. So those are the fundamental bits and pieces. Obviously there's a meter, uh, you can go line or signal with this to... to you know, as, as in most HF receivers of this era. Um, the added benefit of the microprocessor, as well as having the switch capability, um, is that you have two extra features. There's a scanner mode here, which allows you to scan certain memory banked 
um, frequencies with all the settings. So you set in a, you can set up a uh, an entry in the memory with its mode, its AGC, the you know the frequency, and it will just go to that as soon as you you, you type in the uh, the memory address. Um, and you can select the uh, lockout or you know lockout for each of those bands. So although you've got 100 memories, you may want to lock out 90 of them and just use 10 at the base. Um, so and of course, <laughs> I haven't talked to them. Open the, the box there. Uh, we've also got the memory address, which is down here, and uh, that allows you to set up a, a particular memory. Um, this five nine four five, which is a Radio New Zealand this time of the evening, um, and um, save it into memory. And you can do that for several stations. And to give an idea uh, on the recall of this, it's um, it's a little bit peculiar. But you basically type in the the, the memory address you want to recall. So you go O two and recall, and that's what New Zealand is, so there's obviously no change. Um, and you go 01, recall, uh, that's a, probably an amateur band um, signal I was looking at some time before. Um, or maybe 03, recall, and we've got 8867, and you'll hear that it's uh, the USB that will come up. That's uh, a local Pacific um, even audible HF frequency, um, and you go all the way through. Um, This is the American uh, American USA air frequency. Right, another band there. Let's just see what else is in here. Huh. If it's been corrupted, there's there's much what you'll get. So we go back to 07 recall at one meg. So 06 recall. And of course there's WWV. So that uh, this time of night this is sort of what you'd expect to see. And again, it's in a six kilohertz bandwidth, AM, and uh, it's fairly strong to be frank. It's uh, you know 20, 20, 30 uh, signal high. So um, let's just have a bit of a tune around on some of the, the amateur bands this time of the evening and see what else we can hear. Uh, we'll select up 40 meters. So in this case, we enter the frequency. So it's seven point. One is a reasonable starting frequency, megahertz. Go straight to it. We're in AM mode, so we need to be in lower sideband. So it's, it's quite uh, quite lively. And we'll just have a bit of a, a tune around. So we've got medium. The whole feel of the receiver is um, how can I describe this? It's 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 quality. It's like you're driving a Rolls Royce. You know, someone said it's like driving a Cadillac. Um, it is. It's incredible. The the soft touch of the buttons. The 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 VFO, um, you know, I, I don't tend to get into the uh, ergonomics of things that much, but um, it does feel rather nice to drive this around, and it's it's quick. Um, it, it just goes to the spot frequency, select the mode, boom, you're there. That might be a bit quiet. Let's see if anybody else can up here. Just got slow. No, it seems at uh, 40. There's someone down in there. But very quiet. I'll um we'll just try 80. Okay. That's interesting. Sounds quiet. Someone there right on the calling channel. Just tune around so we find anything stronger. In the lower and upper sideband selection, you're fixed to a 3.2. There's no other selection you can make, which is, I guess, reasonable. Um, I've seen some sets where you can uh, adjust that around. The audio, it's very nice, very crisp, very clear. And as you heard on the uh, Radio National from New Zealand, it's, 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 it's really nice. I don't go on mics net no more. I used to be on it, but I don't go on now because of a quite strong signal coming into the front. Um, and yeah, could. I used to hear a lot of stations that Mike and them couldn't hear with this 80 meter loop. So, of course, it's out there. Even though it's about 262 feet long, uh, it's a bit of a nice tool, but uh, they reckon the more wire you got up in the air, the better they work. Anyway, so, 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 so,
happy for a while now because of everything else, you know. So, uh, uh, if everyone wants to have a bit of a bash at this, uh, again, next uh, Sunday night, we might... Uh, Very clear audience. Again. On this frequency, this is the other one. So, we'll see. There we go. Some of you people at home at the moment, it's um, it's time to go on the air. And if there's uh, some CW here, we'll try and take it right down to the. There's a CW training program. Yeah. Now I don't know whether we're here at the same evening. No. Okay. Normally it's a CW practice extension. Uh, Three point six nine. Okay, let's further move on to uh, the AM broadcast band, as we were before, for 5945 AM. You'll hear that, um, for instance, there's a... We'll put it to... Um, yeah, something Really nice audio, very full. And if you've got a 16... He looks at readers paying up to support journalism in tough times. And Very nice. In I was listening to uh, a Chinese station. I was listening to a Chinese station yesterday evening on Nine Mates, and it was um, very, very clear. Very nice audio. Sing the songs. I'm speaking to you at what I know is an increasingly challenging time. A time of disruption in the life of our country. It was morning of Fort Susie Ferguson rolling back the 7 a.m. bulletin on RNZ National last Monday for the Queen's broadcast to the UK and the Commonwealth. Now, as a digital age influencer, QE2 is not exactly a prolific producer of multimedia content. Aside from so that's the probably about it, all I can add to this. Um, it is a... Um, an aging receiver. Um, I think the market value is something like one to two k, depending on fitments of uh, front end modules or, um, or or age and general condition. Um, as I say, the boards are looking a bit tired. Uh, this particular one, although they look warped and tired, um, I see no delamination or any other issues on them. So it looks like they're probably going to last a fair while yet. Um, one thing I will comment on um, is that the upper and lower covers are buttoned on. With with these um, Zeus fasteners, and uh, there's a, a lot of effort made with strips down internally to the covers to seal off the microprocessor area from uh, from from the RF grouping. And um, without this cover on it, the, you can actually hear a fair bit of hash going around. And, and also with all the RF cabling, if you find one loose cable, um, you'll find that you'll you'll get a bit of RF hash um, or not RF hash, but uh, data hash getting into the um, uh, getting into the receiver. But uh, all in all, um, this is probably, as I say, the best performer receiver I certainly have in the shack here. Um, I do have a, an 87, or not an 87, an 8611 I think it is, um, as well, a much later DSP VUHF, which does have HF capability, but it comes nowhere near to the performance of this. Um, I, I suspect its follow-on brother, the 8711, may have been uh, the HF version uh, of this, may well have been a, a nice set. But for my money at the moment, um, that's, uh, that's the top of the range here. And uh, yeah, I certainly would recommend it, um, but uh, be aware that these are aging and uh, there are little time bombs in there with these capacitors at the present. Um, I would say in the last uh, last year I've had three radios fail, different suppliers, and uh, they have always been tantalum capacitors. Um, it's a case of pulling and plugging and trying to find out which board is uh, got the cap, cap down and then which like, rich rail it's built, pulling down on. And if you're lucky, it's just a straight swap out. If you're unlucky, it's burnt out some, uh, some feeds, but... Um, Generally, it's uh, it's it's yeah tantalum capacitors. Why would you? Um, the uh, the one last thing I will comment on is uh, the other receiver I have here, which is similar vintage really, um, and was used in a similar fashion, or perhaps uh, at a cheaper rate, uh, is the Raycal RA 6970 and um, I, I you can you can actually hear the synthesizer noise on those receivers. Um, you know, normally you do a, uh, <laughs> a signal noise test, but without anything on the back, these guys have got so much hash on them. Um, it's 
I don't know, it, it's, it's obscene. <laughs> so uh, I can see that the ray calls were used really as just ad hoc, you know, grouped, low cost, um, you know, fixed frequency units in a, in a rack for possible communications. Uh, and this guy here would have been used more for digging down in the noise uh, and pulling in those, uh, those interesting signals that you're trying to, uh, to receive. So I think very different roles, but it's, 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 if you have the choice of a WJ or the, or the ray call, by far, the, rate, the, the, the performance of the WJ is, is head and shoulders uh, above the Raycal 6790. So uh, that's, that's my takeaway. Um, anyway, uh, good hunting. And if uh, any problems, then uh, maybe just jot something down on the, uh, on the comments section on the, uh, the YouTube vid. Thank you for watching.